Okay, so what you're looking at here is my work computer, or Franken PC, as some of you might know it. Anyway, I've decided that this, what, the hardware I've got in this computer is just way too slow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the motherboard, so let's take a look at that board. This is the board out of my old gaming computer, has a dual core AMD processor, 2.4 gigahertz, that's a... Uh, AMD 64, so I'll be able to run 64-bit software, whereas the other computer I've got is just a 32-bit. In fact, I tried running Ubuntu on there, only to find out that it was a 64-bit version I got, and I couldn't run it on Franken PC. In fact, trying to get hold of a 32-bit version seems to be like getting hold of hen's teeth these days. Not sure what this wire is. Um, okay, well, that's a CD. Oh, don't need that at the moment, so I'll just take that out. Way. Even though Franken PC's processor is a Pentium 4 running at 2.8 gigahertz, and this one is only running at 2.4 gigahertz, this one I know is much, much more capable. So get videos rendered much faster, despite the lower clock speed. Because AMD processors from the time kick the ass out of Pentium 4s every time. The only thing is, I don't know if this board still works. That's what we're going to test. I know this board does have a problem. I think this is the one that's got a blown sound chip. But I can easily get a USB plug-in sound device from eBay, so that's not going to be a problem. Looks like the spiders have been setting up a home in this as well. Also got two gigabytes of RAM, so this will be able to run just about anything I can throw at it. The only thing is, I do not know what the connections here are. I'll have to have a look in the user manual and see which ones of these will actually turn the thing on. Right, okay, so I've got it all plugged in and ready to be tested. Connected up an old hard drive I have laying around. I believe I've got Linux. Ubuntu Linux 1404 on there, and I know this hard drive works because I tried it in that old Dell that, I sh that you saw in another video, and well, it tried to boot off that hard drive, but that's a 64-bit version of Ubuntu, so it couldn't do it. But the hard drive does work. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is the power supply, because originally this had a 400-watt supply. I'm using the only p power supply I have on hand, which is the power supply out of Franken PC, which is only a 250 watt supply. So, if this thing suddenly turns off or power supply starts spewing out smoke, we'll know. Also, it doesn't have the t extra connectors that go in here on the power supply connector, but I remember I tried this on another 400 watt power supply a long time ago that also didn't have these extra bits there. And it powered up just fine. So we'll see. And I think to turn the power on, I've looked at the manual. And those two pins right there. Short those two together and that should turn it on. Also, I don't know if I plugged the hard drive into the right socket. So we'll also see. Okay, so I'm about to plug this in. And where's the microphone? Okay, I'm about to plug this in. Smoke test! Right. Okay, our monitor's on. We do have a little light on the motherboard. I don't know if you can see that, but that's come on. A little light on right there. Okay, let's see if I can turn this thing on. Let's see if this even works. Let's see. I made a little screwdriver here so it doesn't short out anything else. Should just come on. I'll touch this thing. There we go. It's come on. Is it going to show any signs of life? I'm not seeing anything from the monitor. I don't know if maybe it wants another VGA card. Well, it's turned itself on, but the monitor seems to be dead. I sure hope this board isn't dead because I plan to use this. I just realised that I was shooting that whole part of the microphone without the video. I mean, I just realised that I was shooting that whole video 
little realising that I didn't know where the microphone was. Anyway, not seeing any signs of life on the computer though. Right, so I've put in a graphic card and again I don't know where the microphone is. I'm going to put the microphone on a chain around my neck so I don't keep losing it. Right, well, here we go. I've now put in a graphic card so I can try this again. And also, I've stripped that CD cable, connected it so two of the pins on there are on the power button pins. The other two pins are not connected to anything at all. Okay, now let's try to make this thing fire up. I feel like I'm hot wiring a car here. Okay, those two buttons don't do anything. Okay, there we go. Because it could just be the, v the internal VGA disabled. Is the monitor going to come on? Or is this board dead? I'm still not seeing any signs of life. Could we have a dead board here? Doesn't look like it's doing anything. I'm going to try it without the hard drive connected. In some cases... A bad hard drive can stop a computer from doing anything. Okay, so... I'll just put that to one side. Completely disconnected from the computer. I'll try booting it up again. And see if we get anything on the screen this time. Okay. On we go. This is without the hard drive connected. Still nothing. I mean, we should see a boot error if it was going to do anything, but it's not. I don't like the looks of this. I'm not even getting any response from the keyboard. You should see lights come on when I press things like scroll lock, num lock, and caps, but that's not even doing that. So, that's not the problem. Final resort, I'm going to see if it's the memory that's causing us problems. Now, I've removed one of the memory sticks. So now we only have one gigabyte of RAM in there. And that's in the first memory card slot, or whatever you want to call it. So, let's power on again. And see what we get. I'm not even hearing a post beat, but I don't think this thing has a speaker installed. It still doesn't look good. Thing is, when things go wrong, sometimes you just got to go through bit by bit until you find the problem. As of yet, I haven't found the problem. Okay, so I'm going to take this one out. Just put that to one side. There's the other memory. I'm not sure which way around it goes. I think these can be put in either way, actually. Okay, that's not going to go in that, that way. Okay, we'll turn it around. Try it this way. Means I don't have any other machines that can take a DDR2 memory, so can actually put that memory into another computer and test it that way. I have to say, this thing is put. The only other thing I think I could try is reseating the CPU, see if that is the problem. And if that doesn't work, I don't know what I'll do. Okay, so I've got the heatsink off. And that was warm, so obviously the CPU is getting power. Now if I could just duck under the camera wire so I can get up here. Try reseating the CPU, and don't worry, everything is unplugged. Uh, I may be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. One of those nice ZIF sockets. Got a bit of heat sink grease on me. Okay. Just to give it a bit of a blow. I know you shouldn't really do this, but... I'm trying to remember what... 
which way this goes in. I'm trying not to get any heat sink grease on the CPU pins. There we are. Done all I can. I haven't didn't get any grease on any of the pins. That will definitely stop it from working. Now I've got some heat sink grease somewhere, but do you think I can find it? Anyway, that's the CPU reseated, so let's see. Let's just clip this heat sink back on. Let's just clip let's just clip this heat sink back on. As so I can get it in. Okay, there we are, I've got it back on. Just had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery. Okay, so this is the final attempt. One stick of RAM. CPU reseated. Will it turn on? Will it power up? I think I'm going to have to call this one a loser. I remember some time ago, on my other computer, the BIOS it lost its BIOS settings. So, I've taken the battery out to see if that would cause anything. If that would do anything. I'm also just going to test this ba if this battery is holding a charge. It appears to be at 3 volts. So the battery still seems to be good. So, I'm taking the battery out. So it loses all its settings, doesn't seem to have had any effect. So I'm just going to unplug it again, put that battery in. should be clear of anything that might have been preventing it from booting up or even turning on it still doesn't look like we're gonna get anything okay I did test the supply voltages so I'll just go through that again this is the 3 volt supply I mean the 5 volt supply, that's pretty much dead on what it should be. The 12 volt supply, however, does seem a little bit low. I'm getting 11.6 volts, but I don't think that's low enough to cause any problems. So, I'm at a loss with this one. Looks like I won't be using this board anytime soon. Okay, here is a last resort to see if it really is the power supply not giving enough power. I've taken the power supply out of my gaming computer, which is a nice 600 watt Corsair power supply, and I've connected this one up to this board. And you might have been able to notice that it is a 24 pin connection. So I'm going to plug this in, we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't power on all the way with this power supply, we'll know. I hope my ugly face isn't in the shot. But here goes. You go power it up with this power supply. This is the moment of truth. Let's see if it comes on. Alright then. I'm just going to put this back in my computer, put Frank and the PC back together, and now we know the truth. I was really hoping it would work this time, really. <laughs>